To start off, everything discussed in this video is merely speculation and things are subject to change on the new meta discoveries or subsequent mini patch adjustments or if someone does better math than me. So keep in mind that my recommendations are more of an educated guesses rather than the rule of thumb on how to play Storm. With that said, let's begin breaking down all of the changes most relevant to the hero. So, what's new in regards of how Storm can be built? Alongside the new items, the Bloodstone received a new item requirement, Voodoo Mask, bumping up the total cost to 6k gold. This further reinforces last patch's conclusion that Orchid is the superior item to Rush. Alternatively, I've also considered the combination of Threads and Witchblade as a possible substitute to Orchid. And while the cost, damage and DPS comes down very close to each other, Orchid takes the top spot simply due to the silence component. So, for the early and mid game, I would say that the item build remains unchanged. If you have a kill lane, no need to finish down right away, grab gloves of haste, turn it into Threads later, stack up some mangoes for extra kill potential, then finish Orchid by minute 12 to 15. If it's a farm lane, go ahead with Null and choose Sage's Masks, then rush Brown Boots Orchid for min 9 to 12. Now, for mid game, remember this general rule. Offensive item, defensive item, then whatever you need. Offensive item will pretty much always be the Orchid, and as for defensive, we have some consideration to do. Yulsa's mana region has been reduced and Bloodstone's cost increased. Regardless, I don't think there are better options despite these changes, so continue to build Storm as you did before. Use to BKB if you need to make space for your carry, straight BKB if your entire team is behind, and straight Bloodstone to BKB if you and the team is doing well and you can find space to both farm and make kills. Now, when it comes to late game, it's where things get interesting. Storm's acronym shard not only empowers his own damage, but also sets up extra damage for the allies. So, regardless if after level 20 you're playing more of a utility storm, setting up kills for a carry with extra vortex duration and perhaps Agonis' black hole, the shard will both empower that playstyle and also complement pickup storm well, should you go blood torn hex route. As with the late game, more damage comes from allowing storm to right click instead of stacking overload jumps. So, conclusion, pick up the shard whenever you have accomplished both offensive and defensive item options. Also also, if you found use for Yules in the early game, now, come late late game, after both Hex and Bloodthorn, you can also enjoy an upgraded Yules and, while costly, it surely brings nice stats with a purchase and the safe component will always be useful. I had trouble recommending Shivas to 6 sided Storm before and now I can double down on that thought and say get Super Yules instead. As for neutral items, the new Faerys Trinket sure is an interesting one, but the testing reveals it to be the same overall value as Arcane Ring in terms of both DPS and mana efficiency and can be substituted by viable higher tier items as soon as possible. None of the other new items seem like game changers, so as usual, judge on match by match basis. Now, the last part of the patch to be addressed are the hero changes. Let's start with the new hero. If you encounter a hoodwink as enemy mid, the lane can be played as both kill and farm lane, as the hero has fairly poor strength gain and does not output high DPS through the auto attacks. If encountered in any other role, a standard orchid storm will deal with hoodwink just fine, even with a passive evasion. As for other heroes, the following names have received changes mostly through Agonim's shard that make them extra dangerous to storm and should be considered soft or hard counters when contemplating picking Storm in the first place. Naga can now target Storm through BKB. OD is more efficient at shutting down Storm's laning stage. Puck received general buffs in addition to being a natural counter. Queen of Pain's shard gives her a natural orchid, opening up new optimization against Storm roots. SD has some extra save through shard, further complicating pickoff potential. Shadow Friend had Raze's mana cost reduced, dealing extra damage to Storm during the laning phase, which was already overwhelming. Now, we do have one problem. With the reduced region from Yules and Bloodstone taking extra precious minutes to acquire, I think the mana region level 10 talent returns to the table to help you alleviate the mana hunger you will naturally feel. 
and come late game, with heals being a more natural pickup, the extra region surely adds up, seeing as Bloodstone boosts every source you have. The only exception to the level 10 mana region is if by then your team is ahead, or at least even, and you have uncontested rune control. In that case, Overload will be of more value, because you'll be able to get the extra region from controlling the runes. Regardless of talent choice, you should still send yourself a clarity with every purchase and chug it whenever you find a chance. Regarding level 15 choice, if you feel Bloodstone should be delayed until later, take the health talent to boost up the survivability in the meanwhile. Regarding the level 25 talent, I still believe the auto remnant is superior in any regular match scenario. And that sums up the most important changes relevant to the storm. Overall, I don't think the win rate will fluctuate much, but Storm should certainly be more fun to play come late late game. And this concludes today's topic. Good luck!